All right, let's go. Take off. Check. Thrust rift. Check. Thrust set. Anything else? Hold. Check. V1. Rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up. 400 Elham. feet. Check. Thrust ref. Check. We have speed. So like always the 200LR is climbing like a rocket really Has so much uh, spare uh, performance It really is climbing like a rocket Flaps 1 Speed check, flaps 1 Flaps up. Speed check. Flaps up. <coughs> After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist complete. I do believe, uh, I'm not sure actually why um, Autopilot, standard Yeah, I'm not sure why uh, PMDG calls it uh, fictional uh, 200 uh, with uh, Alitalia because I do believe Alitalia, I've seen um, uh, Alitalia 777 so I'm not really sure Unless it's uh, 300 yards, but I didn't see 300 yards in the uh, uh, PMDG uh, scenery, uh, well, library thing, so I don't know. Otherwise, yeah, they have a uh, 200 yard, maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. around flight level 100 it really is climbing like a rocket okay only one 300 okay Off we go. In four minutes, it's already at uh, twelve thousand feet. It's amazing. So I see no flavor one hundred or above is uh, achieved uh, very easily. Right, uh, we kind of cleaned the cloud layer. So seatbelt sign. 
Seatbelt signs off. Thank you. Yeah, the 787 is, um, is probably the, the aircraft of the future, to be honest. 787, 350, these are the two, uh, and the 777X in a sense, but the 777X for the next, um, even once it starts uh, uh, being uh, delivered to the airlines and enters uh, commercial service, it might be maybe a little bit too big um, to start with. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, I mean, I'm not... Uh, I'm not a route planner or strategist or anything like that, but um, the one thing for sure is that playing like the 380, I think the, the days are actually numbered on the, on the 380, for example. So um, I think uh, two, uh, two engine aircraft like the 350, 787, very uh, fuel efficient. Uh, maybe. Uh, not so much of a big uh, cabin, uh, but mostly like a very uh, fuel efficient. I, I think these are the uh, aircraft of the of the future, really. Uh, at least for the next, uh, you know, foreseeable future, with uh, all the stuff happening around the place. Uh, yeah, it is a problem. Um, it is a big problem. Uh, but uh, what, what else? What else can be done? You know. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Yeah, some might be uh, convertible to cargo. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if Airbus has ever thought about, you know, making a, a freighter version. You know, the 747 has a freighter version, for example, but the 380 uh, hasn't. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, the big problem is the, the fuel efficiency with it with the 380. Uh, that's, the, that's the big issue, really. Because it's uh, guzzling a lot of fuel. I think it's uh, guzzling in the region of uh, say 12, 14 tons an hour, something like that. So it's a lot of fuel. And I think it's uh, cheaper to run maybe two 787s uh, rather than one 380 or something like that. So. Uh, 777 will burn initially maybe uh, 8, 9 tons an hour when you're very, very heavy. Uh, and then down to maybe... Depends the uh, level you fly and how heavy you are towards the end. But maybe uh, 7 tons an hour at the end of, uh, of a flight. And you still carry 350 people also, so... Carry less than a 380, but you still carry a fair, a fair amount of people. And uh, on a 14-hour flight, on uh, on a long, uh, long-haul flight, uh, a 380 would go and take uh, maybe um, 200, 220 tons of fuel overall. A uh, 777, I think, uh, would take uh, depends on the flights, of course, but only maybe 110 tons. Or something like that. So uh, it's almost uh, double the fuel for uh, for the same flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that's that's what I understand. Um, a lot of the 14 hour, let's say, uh, flights on the 380 burn, they maybe don't burn the hole because there's obviously reserves and stuff, but they've got to leave uh, with uh, more than 200 tons of fuel for a 14 hour flight. So it's a lot of fuel. So if you don't have the passengers to obviously pay for that fuel, then it's uh, you run the, the flight at a loss basically, so it's, it's not so great. I think uh, Airbus was looking at uh, new uh, engines, more efficient engines for the 380. But anyway, the production now is uh, is gonna stop and. Uh, and the future of, uh, of the aircraft itself is uh, is kind of being jeopardized at the moment. I think um, Qatar are kind of announcing that uh, they might not fly the uh, aircraft anymore. Uh, the likes of uh, Air France, British Airways, all those guys as well have kind of uh, put the aircraft aside. So, yeah. 1,000 feet to level off. Oh, we're gonna fly over um, Sardinia. Oh, very nice. I'm not sure what the uh, the economics are. You know, I was actually uh, talking to uh, to a friend about all these things, and uh, I mean, as I said earlier on, I'm not like a route planner. I'm not like a aviation like strategist, or uh, it's way beyond, you know, my uh, my remit and my uh, capabilities. Um, on an aircraft, um, if if an airline gets rid of an aircraft, is it uh, above all at the moment? Does it make sense to uh, keep the aircraft um, and run it at a loss a little bit, or is it more expensive to to get rid of it than to run it? Um, a lot of aircraft actually not owned by the airlines; they are leased, so it's a, um, almost as if you were like leasing your car so is it cheaper to uh, lease your car uh, but keep it and kind of run uh, even if you run your car at a loss but still kind of run it to keep it and hopefully that you know you can make a, a longer use out of it or is it better to just you know call it a day and get rid of the of the car and stop paying a lease and obviously not make money from it anymore from the from the aircraft but at least you don't have the lease anymore um, if you own the aircraft, maybe it's a little bit different because, I mean, um, to sell it is going to be difficult, <laughs> even more so on a second-hand market that doesn't really exist. Exist, so uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, seven four seven is uh, is also a, a dying breed. Obviously, it's a it's an older model eh, because the seven four seven. I mean, the old classic two hundred. Uh, that was already a while ago. The 400 was also is also quite uh, dated. The uh, 800 is a little bit more modern, but I believe that uh, Boeing didn't build uh, many of them. I don't think there's a lot of uh, 747, 800s uh, around. Uh, R&P, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, For the RNP, uh, if you wish to uh, to set your RNP, uh, you can go to a, a progress page and then uh, go to uh, page four. And uh, in the RNP here, uh, enter like uh, the actual RNP uh, according to the uh, to the procedure. So usually for uh, ARMAV approach. Um, the RNP is uh, required is uh, 0.3, so you would uh, you would send uh, 0.3 and the RNP here, and then uh, yeah, it just uh, appears here. And um, if you look at the bottom of the bottom of the uh, navigation display, you'll get RNP 0.3 there. So Whenever the uh, actual navigation is um, uh, greater than 0 0.3, then you will get like uh, an alert, uh, you know, 
basically telling you that uh, you're exceeding the uh, the navigation uh, requirements uh, and the same here to be honest is not really applicable because uh, unless you simulate a failure of GPS or whatever then that's not gonna be applicable so much but in real uh, you can use the navigation uh, capability that's uh, that's for sure uh, and obviously if uh, then the uh, uh, navigation performance is exceeded then you get the alert in real we uh, we do get that uh, nav enable rnp for example uh, even in the cruise if uh, if you lose the gps a um, uh, few areas around the world are like famous for like uh, gps uh, jamming uh, so the gps uh, signals are jammed probably for military purposes and uh, and uh, you get yeah you get like a GPS um, basically a ICAST message there and you've got the messages associated with, with it you can see the um, uh, you can see the actual navigation performance there the number increases and then when it gets to two then a short while after you get like the nav enable RNP so uh, it's just because basically the the GPS itself has not failed, but the signal is uh, it doesn't receive any signal anymore because the signal is jammed. So um, um, yeah, so we do uh, get that from time to time in real when the, there are some areas in the world where the GPS uh, signals are jammed. So flying on top of uh, Sardinia, and then I believe we'll. Uh, fly on top of uh, Mallorca I think the the way the navigation display is at the moment uh, that's pretty much how I would have it um, in real so and the cruise like this a range of 160 miles uh, obviously all these there on the top left top right corner that's um, you can't uh, customize this to your wishes so that's it's there and it remains there i would have the uh, airport display there and the weather radar it's kind of necessary along with the tcas the tfc there and then i would have uh, the two uh, vors uh, displayed some guys uh, switch them off like that so you don't get the uh, the vfr, VFR the VOR display uh, bottom uh, left and right uh, but uh, yeah I do like to have like something else like you know, like this and have uh, the VORs very often the, um, the FMC would pick if there are VORs on the route uh, and uh, the FMC would pick up VORs automatically which are on the route so I kind of uh, you see there the green needles kind of uh, point uh, down the uh, the flight plan, so that's good. And en route it's a little bit the same if there was like a big cell there over like Charlie uh, Delta Papa. You know, the, the way I circle it here with the, uh, with, the, with the mouse, then you would turn... Uh, away from it turn left or turn right maybe depending on the wind maybe because the wind is coming from the left then go uh, into the wind to kind of uh, stay clear of any uh, uh, turbulence uh, downwind of the of the cloud so you turn upwind of the cloud and kind of go around um, once again with uh, ATC uh, clearance usually it's not a problem for ATC to give you a, a weather deviation but on, on the departure it will be the same uh, you sit on the runway, you used, if you know it's there, because obviously you would kind of be aware of it, if you know it's there, you kind of line up on the runway, ask for like maybe 30 seconds um, to, uh, to have a good look with the weather radar and then say, okay, either we cannot go because it's sitting right at the end of the runway and, and there's no kind of escape route, but if it's maybe 10 miles away and there's a way to turn before, then you will turn left or right as i said depending on the uh, on the configuration and uh, yeah avoid uh, 
Uh, the Stormlight, as I said, um, up here is more like the you uh, you put on all the lights in the fly deck at night, so it's kind of makes it quite like bright. Um, yeah. Yeah, the 737 is, is a little bit more hands-on, you know, there's a uh, there's little bit more uh, setup involved and more manual things to do. Um, on the 777 there's a lot of uh, automatic stuff and um, on the 737, I mean, the overhead um, is much more involved than that, it's a different philosophy altogether anyway. Um, when I say that in particular, because the um, any of the switches here are kind of linked to the uh, ACAS, so for example, or maybe not all switches, but at least the main vital switches are linked to uh, 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 to the ICAS here. So you know the the recall system basically. So for example, if don't do that at home or don't do that on a real aircraft, but if I um, switch off the, the left uh, forward pump, um, obviously you've got the, the light on the button up here, but if you uh, look at the ICAS, then it shows here. So that like that's also a reminder that either there's a fault with the in this uh, instance with the pump or the ways that the pump itself is switched off so if we switch it back on then the message disappears so as i said pretty much all those uh, all those buttons relating to our uh, systems are linked to the uh, recall or icas message whereas on the 737 that's not the case on the 737 in particular one of the big traps was the was the packs if um, one of the packs was uh, off, which I can do here as well. Um, if you were calling the, the recall, there was not pack light like it is here. So you could take off uh, and pressure with the packs off and basically uh, take off uh, unpressurized. And um, you wouldn't uh, realize until you... Uh, you get the uh, altitude warning, you know, at uh, 14,000 feet, was it? Um, going bing, 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 bing. So that was uh, that was like a little bit of uh, of a trap on the 737, and a lot of other switches as well were not really uh, uh, linked to the uh, to the recall. So uh, you had to be careful with the uh, with the setup of the uh, overhead panel. Whereas here, as I said, like all the main buttons are, you know, linked to the um, to the ICAS, so if you forget something, it will show straight away. Traffic, traffic. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't give me a TCAS. Oh, he's gone. Oh, that's original. Uh, this one is Mallorca, Palma de Mallorca. Oh yeah. Yeah, the storms in uh, Asia are huge. Yeah. Yeah, those big storms are sometimes annoying, but uh, yeah, you have to. Uh, I guess you have to deal with it. En route, avoid. There's a lot of um, also. Uh, those uh, those storms are kind of uh, embedded, so even though you kind of um, deviate from the storms, there's still a lot of clouds, like thinner clouds, uh, all the way around, and and uh, and even in those uh, kind of like thinner clouds, yeah, it's still quite bumpy and stuff. It's sometimes a little bit unpleasant, uh, to be honest. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's. Basically, all the tropical areas, yeah. Because even though you stay clear of the of the big cell, as I said, there's a lot of like um, layer of clouds around, and 
and there's no way to avoid that anyway those clouds very often are those like thin layers either don't show on the radar or don't show only as like green so green you think well if the, the whole weather radar is uh, is green and you've got like a few red dots around obviously you're gonna avoid the red dots uh, or the red like uh, returns but uh, if everywhere is green then <laughs> you just have to uh, you're not gonna deviate like 200 miles to avoid green so you punch through the green but sometimes the green is a little bit unpleasant but i mean what else can you do you know